Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm CK and today we are going into part two of the interview with Alan Kakinami. Um, if you're asking who Alan Kakinami is, what's this guy? Um, so he's a uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. he's a pro stringer who strung for the Yonex stringing team at the world's biggest events, such as for badminton, such as the All Englands, uh, the World Championships, as well as the Olympics. So. If you're not seeing part one of the interview, uh, please check it out here. I'll link it up in this corner here. Um, and we're going straight into part two. See you there. Have you seen uh, Mark Lawrence's Yonex video? What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I saw it. I think he was talking on the fly. So like he didn't really get to think out too much stuff like when he was talking, especially like when he mentioned like the weakest part of the frame is the head. I think that that came out wrong. It probably he probably meant to say like frames crack at the head like that's where they mostly traditionally break yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but technically when you're stringing the racket stringing wise the weakest point is the bottom why is that because that's where i i technically cannot answer that question probably because it's just, bonded on the bottom with the t that is when it's all manufactured the technical point i cannot tell you but watching a guy string top down, 34 pounds, breaking three rackets in a row, and then going bottom up and having no problem, that's the only thing <laughs> I can give you. I it, think Tim it mentioned, works. I think Tim mentioned, mentioned this as well. So was, was it you that was doing the three rackets, or was it someone else? It was uh, okay. the stringer next to me. Okay. <laughs> from San Diego. That's okay. all I can tell you. Yeah. And it's a Korean guy, right? It's a, it's a Korean player. That Korean was, player, yeah. Yeah, Korean player. Yeah. So do all you stringers, so when you, when you get into a big tournament, everyone, do you use the same technique or does Yonex tell you guys, right, this is what you do. This is what you string. You know, you, you double pull the last two or you level, you know, is there any specific technique or When style? I was stringing for uh, All England's, World Championships, Olympics, we just did the Yonex string pattern. The, the, the double pull on the last two mains and then the, the last yes. five crosses, it wasn't really, we, we didn't do that. It wasn't thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, for like Tofik though, he was doing 33, 36 at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So they were actually pulling his last two mains I don't know if that's when they started doing it, but for Tofik, they were doing that, pulling his last two mains and then tying off. <clears throat> but for me, I just did the Yonex string pattern, tie off that, uh, tie your mains off at eight, start your, tie your knot at six. Yeah. But if I'm doing US Open where I lead that tournament, then yeah, I'm using my own string pattern. Okay. Well, so, okay. I have two questions. So, what what string was Tower for using at the Olympics? Six to six Ultimax. 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 Okay. And then, so the, the second question is, do you guys get to go on the R and D, or do you get you know invited to speak about the R and D? You know, part that of the strings? started happening. I think after after I left, I I was only a stringer. U.S. Open, we did do like a string clinic one time. Open to the public. And yeah. But there's only a handful of people. It wasn't really like publicized. People okay. that knew how to string, or actually, I think it was more for shops. Those were the guys that were invited. People told other people, and yes, there was mm. a couple of like regular, regular people, like general public, but not. They were mm. mainly like pro shop guys. Okay. Well, I wonder if there, if there's something like this in the UK as well, because if there is, I'd like to attend. You know. Um, I've done the, so I'm not sure if you know, Liam Nolan, I think the UK RSA, um, UK Racket Stringers Association, I think he, he set something up previously. I think Liam strung at Wimbledon quite a few times. Um, and then I've done his course quite many years back. Um, I wondered if, if Yonex has a, has a similar one for, for badminton. Oh, if, no. if they do, I'll be up for that. Well, maybe, maybe we need to get in touch with Mark Lawrence uh, or Tim. They might know more. My, I think me. Yonex Japan has something, but it's only for shops. Not for public. Yeah. You have to have a Yonex account <laughs> ah. to be invited to like one of those things. Clinics, yeah. 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 
the the outlaw Togo. Oh, Kenichi Tag, yes, the outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> yes, his strings were always the, the, like the tightest, if not you know the, the the thinnest and the tightest. Every time you hear him at tournaments, I wonder what kind of numbers he's looking at. I Have think you ever he was like thirty three, thirty four. Usually the Japanese guy would string for him. And then, so so they have a specific stringer. Then they re- they request for specific guys. I've never really talked to him because mm. he doesn't speak English. Yeah, but uh, the Japanese guy would always take his racket and string them. Because I think is he based in Malaysia now? I, I think he's yeah. Is he, yeah, he's, I've seen his YouTube videos. Yeah, I, that, yeah, that guy's big. <laughs> in a lot of weight. Yeah, but he's still doing badminton and he's coaching a lot, yeah. so that's good. I guess Malaysian food is really good. It, well, so I'm originally I'm from Malaysia, and so yes, I can I can tell you it is it is very good. I'm from Malaysia, so yeah, so, so it's real good. <laughs> he looks like Malaysian food is good. I can I can claim that it's hundred percent true, <laughs> non biased whatsoever. But yes, I can I can tell you it's good. Um, so and, and one more autograph I have is Sabine Lisicki. Yes, um, Germany tennis player. Tennis player. Yes. Oh, yes. Tell us about your story with her and and Serena. So in 2014, I was stringing for Sabine Lasicki at uh, Bank of the West Classic. And the day that she hit the fastest serve, I think it was 210 kilometers, 210.8. The day that she brought in her rackets, the day that she, she hit that serve, Serena brought in six rackets. Serena Williams. <laughs> so then I was stringing for Sabine and Serena, and usually same stringer, same machine. Mm. But Serena was a higher ranked player. Oh. So I had to take care of Serena's first, and then my buddy took care of Sabine. Oh, and then wow. she hits that world record serve. <laughs> it was supposed to be mine. Your claim to fame okay. gone. <laughs> yeah. I lost it. So when when you say that you were only stringing for Serena and Sabine, was it like was it based on contract or you know like what? No, what it, it's kind of luck for tennis. We try to but we try to balance it so like if they meet, it's probably quarters or semis. Yeah, so so you break it up into your top half, bottom half, and then you break it into quarters, and each stringer takes something. Yeah, we try. We do our best to offset it. Usually maybe like four of us, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Players bring in rackets random times, and then Serena's like six every day. <laughs> she likes fresh strings. About, yeah. And I look at her strings, and there's no ball fuzz. Oh. She didn't even use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I think they don't have to pay for strings, right? This might be a stupid question. <laughs> they, the tennis players actually do, but they're reimbursed from their sponsors. Bank of the West, Classic, players are getting charged like 25 bucks for labor. But I hear like U.S. Open is like almost double. Wimbledon is maybe around like 60 U.S. dollars for labor. Okay. But in, in badminton tournaments, like say the All Englands, you, you, they don't charge unless, say for example, I, I think... I've seen a sign, say, from the Yonex ringing team. If you're not putting on the stencil logo, then you have to pay a certain amount of money for labor. Yeah. So for sponsor players or anybody with the playing in the tournament with the Yonex racket, as long as we put the logo on, we don't charge them. But if you want, like, a, a leaning racket or a Victor racket strong, then, yeah, they charge them some sort of fee. Okay. And I'm assuming the fee doesn't go to you guys. <laughs> uh, for those tournaments, no. But like okay. US Open, it, it kind of goes, we would charge them, and then that's basically our lunch money. Or beer. <laughs> yeah, beer money. Or beer money. Okay. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. See, I think these are the insights that us fans never get to know until we we speak to you guys who's actually on the ground on the field interacting with the professionals um at these tournaments and then so yeah so this is kind of like yeah goss that we need to know (laughs) i I have something for you so so at the olympics 
we're asking the players to sign the machine. So I, I go, uh, hey, Leon Day, can you sign the machine? He goes, oh, no, no, sorry. Victor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Victor only. Do you want me to sign something else? I said, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's <it. laughs> I like oh. totally dissed the young day. <sighs> My bad. But he's he's an awesome player, man. He's back with the Onyx now. Yeah. Like, why couldn't you sign it? Who cares what he, is it? What he yeah. signs? Maybe he's contractually obligated to sign only Victor stuff. Yeah. I, I, I can't see how you're obligated to you can't sign anything like say so fans bring you something else isn't it yeah you can't like say oh no sorry i can't sign your cover because it's yonex it's a shame but yeah <laughs> then then i asked lynn dan he, he was leaning yeah so like lynn dan goes yeah <laughs> he, like, actually signs the machine upside down <laughs> but he he grabs a pen and he like leans over the machine like <laughs> it, it looks like his, his signature is actually upside down. Wow. I think Lin, Lin Dan, was he signing with his right hand or left hand? Because oh, left he, hand. Was he? I, I thought it was his left hand. Because I thought he was only playing left-handed. He's right-handed. <sighs> I don't know. But I, I just know that he leaned over the machine and signed the, signed the machine. That's all you need. Upside down. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Um, if what are your advice, say for a budding stringer, so every, everyone starting stringing, what are what is your advice that you can give to them? My first racket actually took me two hours and forty five minutes. Mine's so, not far off for my first one as well. So <laughs> just be patient. Just it, be patient. You just got to stick with it. I mean, it's not something that I think stringing. You have to love it to actually do it and do it good. If you don't love it, you're just trying to get something done. It's like work. It's not fun. When it's but no love, no passion. It, yeah. If you make it into something that you, you like, I think it becomes much more easier to do. Don't overthink. Don't overthink. Then you'll get frust- frustrated. Yes, and burnt out because um, seeing what well, hearing you say 25 rackets on average on a, on a tournament day, I think like... <sighs> I remember doing like six in one session. Um, obviously, I string at home. And then, yeah, six in one session, no more than 10 rackets a day. And like my fingers gone, you know, numb and red. <laughs> so 25 yeah. rackets, it's not easy. It's, it's a 10, 12-hour shift, isn't it? Yeah. My cousin, because US Open, usually I'd be leading. So my cousin, he had his head in the machine. So that guy's doing 28 to like 30... 31, 32 a day. That guy's cranking. But now he's like the lead US stringer. So 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 he gets to let someone else do the <laughs> head in the machine work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But because he had a good teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, this is why we call you Kakinami Sensei, right? So uh, exactly. <laughs> That I I actually take a little offense to that. I don't I don't really think of myself as a sensei or a master. If well, you think of like a sensei or a master, they've actually mastered all their techniques, right? I I am definitely still learning. Even watching like people that do terrible string jobs, I still want to watch them. I I want to see what they do wrong, and maybe there's a trick that, hey, you know, I could try to incorporate that with my stringing. Oh, that looks pretty interesting. I could try Absolutely. to do that. Even like if it's terrible, I still want to watch it. To, I just want to learn to see if I could pick up anything that they're doing. If it's a terrible string job, there's nothing I can do about it. They, they might want to learn, but if you're doing something really, really bad and you're putting it on YouTube, <laughs> you, you have to have some kind of ego to think what you're doing is okay. <laughs> well you just gotta send it right you just gotta you know like shoot it and then send it and then once people look at it and then some people will be able to tell you what you're doing wrong in the in a yeah. good way where you learn from like, right those kinds of people that can take criticism they they probably want to learn but i've seen this one youtube channel where the guys 
they're doing speed, you know, like five times the speed of stringing. It's all pre weaved, everything's pre weaved. Uh, no, <laughs> it's actually a, a genuine string job, but they open up the the side mounts so that they can work on the. Ooh, I think I know which video you're talking about. <laughs> I think I know which. Video. They've disabled the comments on their on their YouTube channels for a reason, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'd like to see them string in like normal time. In real like, life, I, I want to leave them a comment like, "Hey, make a video on like do it real time, so I can actually see what you guys are doing." You know, I want to see if I can pick up any trick tips. Mm. But I can't <laughs> jump, so. <laughs> yeah, disabling comments, um, not cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, if you see any of my videos, like you know, make a comment. Like I, I want to know what you think, and like mm. if. Uh, if you give me any criticism, hey, you could do this better, that would probably work for me. But yeah, sometimes I get set in my own way of thinking. Like I see people string and they'll pull, set in the next main on the right side or left side. And yeah, I can see how it kind of can save a couple of seconds here and there. It's actually, I think, a good technique, but because I'm so stupid, you know, I'm like set in my own way of stringing. Like I can't do it. I can't fix that problem. Like, I know it's actually good and it's helpful, but yeah. I just can't get myself to do it. <laughs> no, but you've been posting videos uh, recently, um, and and I think it's a it's a good idea. So I'm going to link your YouTube channel um, in the description. I've been watching some of your videos and I can I can certainly pick up lots of things and this is what this is probably why in 2011 2012 I stood around the string area so much watching you guys string and and I think that was that was then when I started really um looking for information online and and looking at, on how to string whereas now I'm trying to make the same videos online to try and help people um yeah for me it's more of a passion to like help out mm. you know, like I, I know some stringers that are, well, it's kind of like a, it's a secret, the way that we do these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if you want to learn, you have to pay me money. Actually, in the U.S., I, I did have a couple of people, like, mainly for tennis, though. They're like, oh, can you teach me how to string? I'll pay you. I'm like, yeah, I guess if you pay me, I'll, I'll do it. No you won't turn your money down. <laughs> yeah. That's like but an extra yeah. hamburger or something. I think for me, it's more of the sharing the, the knowledge and the information as well as the, the wisdom and experience. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm all about is like, you know, if, if you're going to string, I prefer you string correctly and learn mm. things. than Doing like it right. Watching a terrible video and trying to copy that. Mm. Like I've seen a guy, he strings half of his mains and then he strings the other half. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. he thinks it's like, that's it's the okay. way to do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like Maybe pulling not. my hair out like, oh my God, are you <laughs> serious? And then when he's like trying to open up his holes, he's like shoving his all in there. Oh. Like in the shirt hole. I'm like, oh. <laughs> just, oh. I know what you mean. Just curl Don't up in a ball. That. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> wow. <sighs> I know what you mean. But like when I see like, cringeworthy things that I, I actually cringe i'm like don't don't do that don't do that it's painful no. i know what you mean yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah. Oh. okay i didn't learn anything from that one so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so if, just, if if the videos i put out are crap you need to be telling that you need you need, you need to be saying that it's not good enough or this is how you would do it and then so i can get to pick something up as well yeah, or even better like your, you put your grip video your grip video like I, I i left some comments yes you definitely did <laughs> but it's it's just i think for me i'm okay with that and then that's how i learn and it's just different people have different ways of doing things and and for me i think we need to try it out to understand to yeah. see if it's a better one because if you don't try out others techniques you, you won't know, right? Yeah. So what do you use personally? What's your favorite? Aerosonic. Oh, the 0.61 Aerosonic. Do you find that it, it breaks quite often? For me, no. <laughs> 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 
Well, girls hit hard too. Oh, there we go. Tim and Mark. Yeah. That's a Sudaman Cup. Yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> well, I think the, the only string that I don't think that's out, available outside of Japan is at the Cyber Natural CBG 200 now, isn't it? Um, it used yeah, to be CBG they, 100 as well. Yeah. I don't think they have a 100 anymore. I'm not sure if they have the 200 anymore either. What about the Sky Arc? Do you guys have that? Oh, um, yes. I've not tried it. Um, I think I think it's in the UK now. I think it's in the UK now. I've not tried it either. I've not tried it. I think it's um, mainly softer string for for more beginner inter intermediate player who wants yeah, to have more. I, I heard it was for like older people too. Yeah, like spongier feeling. Players. But then we never know, right? If so, one of the pros like it and then get it get it string strung tight, he might feel good yeah. or she. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So stringing know. is definitely part art, part science, right? Definitely. Uh, I've. For me, I think it's more art. The science part, yeah, I get it, but I don't particularly think too much on the science part. I know like a lot of people is overthinking so many things, way overthink things, and I'm like, I just string rockets. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's. I think it's a it's a way to process the information, and then yeah, and and I think just 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 like we said earlier on, we just have to try it to to keep learning, I guess. Maybe it's yeah, but, minuscule, but it's a small step forward. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those guys are like so technical. It like goes over my head. And like they ask me questions. I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, you have you are the sensei amongst us all. And then you know more than we do because you've been at a very high level and you've been doing it for the top end of the pros. And then see, we come to you for wisdom. For knowledge. Oh, I want to say you're welcome. <laughs> you're too Don't kind. Don't touch my stay. Don't, Don't touch, touch my mustache. Don't touch my mustache. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank you again for your time. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed it. Hopefully, I don't Me know about too, you. Man. This is, wow, that's been pretty cool. <laughs> and then we'll update it. And then I'd like to get people to comment on what we discuss because. These are some of my questions. These are all 100% my questions. People will have different questions, right? Then if if you're happy to, then we can do a second one next time around. Or we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so that's it. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, if you have any comments for Alan or myself, please drop them down in the comments section below. Or if you have any questions at all, also drop them down in the section below. I'm sure we can get Alan to answer some of them. And I will see you in the next one.